<laughs> That's the best I got today, bro. <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> All right. So we are live. Um, welcome to the show, sir. Uh, for those who may not know who you are, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hello. Um, I am uh, Dustin J. London. I am the author of Dust Mountain Blues and Tavern. I am a science fiction and fantasy author, and I've come from North Carolina in the in the states. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, and I mean, it shows in your writing, man. Let me tell you, <laughs> it shows in your writing because, man, you read Dust Mountain Blues, and you it, it it's very in terms of uh in terms of the setting and the and the mood and how you feel when you're reading it. It's immersive. Like, you're like, man, I feel like I'm fucking in the bayou right now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's what I get a lot. And I was like, oh, yeah. Like, I can tell that you're from the country. Right. And I'm like, yep. <laughs> right. That's the point. <laughs> this shit's authentic. <laughs> <laughs> right on, man. So, uh, let's let's jump right into it. Uh, my first question was, where did you get the idea to combine this this country Bayou Boy vibe that you have going with uh, this kind of heavy science fiction setting you got? Because you don't usually see those two things in particular merged at all. <laughs> like, that's pretty original. <laughs> yeah, like, um, I'm, I just always thought that would be a good combination. And, like, a friend of mine was like, why don't you just, like, combine both of them? And I like, because like, cause I had an idea for a Western, and I had an idea for um science fiction. And my friend was like, why not do both in the same book? And I was like, wow. <laughs> why not? So I was like, <laughs> so yeah, I decided man. to do it. Love it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why not do both in the same book? I, I absolutely agree with him, because... <laughs> You're only limited by your imagination. There's, there's, we have freedom of the press. God damn it! I can write whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> if I want to write about space hillbillies, I can do that. Ha, like, I will write those space hillbillies, and they will be the best <laughs> goddamn space hillbillies this world's ever seen. Exactly. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> so. It, it, it right following right in that same vein, um, they are space hillbillies, and so they have a huge family. And one thing, like you, you have a lot of characters that you, I'm sure, had to keep track of while you were writing everything to know where everyone was. And one thing that occurred to me, because as because I also write, and I was like, you have to have a family tree or something like that yep. drawn out. <laughs> Yep, I had I had a family tree drawn out because yep. I have five brothers at the top of the day, and then like from there it just gets bigger and bigger. And I'm like, right, <laughs> right, all right, we gotta put everyone like in their spot. Yeah, man, I I knew you did because I as a writer I was like I'd never be able to keep track of all these people if I didn't have it physically written out, posted on my wall, <laughs> name parent ability what they like to eat <laughs> yeah like oh like i like why did i do this decide to do three generations of people like i like why did i do this to myself like i could have made this so much easier but no i like yeah let's do three generations and uh, that hey, was man. out of control it, it really cements in the hillbilly <laughs> feel though like, exactly, you really though. get that feeling that these people are just unrepentantly breeding. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, like, I have to keep it because it fits. It like... fits. 100%. I agree with that. It fits. And, and you know, that the other thing, too, is you you allowed yourself to show the generational drift. And mm. you, you were able to demonstrate some, some of these values went through the generations and some values changed. And yeah. it it wasn't like a main theme of the story, but it came through, and I yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, you could definitely see that. Like there is like a generational shift, but it's still the family at its core. Cool. <laughs> yeah, and that's how it 
works around here, I guess. Because <laughs> I'm, I, I for me, I got like, I don't know anyone around here that has like below ten cousins, <laughs> like, <laughs> like. <laughs> so. <laughs> Damn, I think I have. Let's see, how many cousins do I have? I think I have. One, two, three. Four. I think I have like five. Yeah, I can't count mine, so <laughs> I'm not going to leave that at that. <laughs> I can't count my cousin. <laughs> exactly, like <laughs> you may be a redneck if you can't count the number of cousins you have on one hand, <laughs> on two hands even. Nope, like so, like. I wanted to make that authentic. <laughs> uh, God, that's fucking funny. <laughs> I can't count mine. It's true. Like, I cannot count mine. Like, even on my, like, just on one side of my family, I can't count it. Uh, that's <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, so, uh, Mo, this one's a little bit more of a hardball question. Okay. And, and because we, you, it's pretty clear that you wanted to be in a science fiction setting mm -hmm. and that came through with most of the story but the thing with the flame and the barge felt a little bit like space magic to me so yeah. is that going to be more explained later or is that kind of going to stay in this mystical arena it's going to sort of be explained later but it's still going to be in the mystical arena uh, mainly because I like to work on the idea that like um uh, some technologies are like harder to explain, <laughs> especially given like the nature of the people that like are, are, are using it, <laughs> that is using it. So they might not get the actual explanation, but I do think I'm going, I do in the second book, I do get in a little bit more on how it came to be okay. and how it like kind of evolves. Gotcha. Cause like, like I said, uh, we're in sci-fi and like I said that just fe that kind of bleeds over into fantasy so I was like so where exactly are we sitting in the genre because I'm like <laughs> I'm one of these people I like labeling everything I like getting everything nice and tucked away into its box <laughs> and sometimes if I if something has multiple labels I start trying to see if I could cut a label off because <laughs> I like everything nice and neat <laughs> You're like, oh crap, it doesn't fit. Oh, <laughs> God damn it, what genre is it? <laughs> but yeah, like I I tend to like put it kind of as a soft science fiction rather than like a horror science fiction. Yeah. And and see it's funny it's funny you use that analogy as well, because I was actually explaining that to someone else uh, who I was talking about the book with. I was like, Well see, there's hard sci fi and then there's soft sci fi and there's science fantasy. And I can't tell between science fantasy and soft sci-fi where this <laughs> sits. And it was bugging that it, I was like, ah, I can't. Ah. Like I promise it. Like I like I have it with soft sci-fi in mind. Like because I because if I dip too deep into fantasy, I will straight up go fantasy mode. Right. <laughs> and that's dangerous right. because I have a fantasy book, and that and anyone that reads my fantasy book is like, whoa, stop fantasy. So I'm like. I have to tuck that away, <laughs> put that away, put the, put the fantasy in the, block, in the box. I hear you. And, and yeah, I mean, it, you, you you rode that line, brother. <laughs> you rode that I line, really... man. <laughs> like, I try not to, like, it's go I knew it was going to bleed through anyway, because I can't help it. I'm a natural fantasy writer. Yeah. So I knew it was going to happen, but I was like... You, you better stay in that box. You better stay in that science fiction box. You you better not. You better not fucking leave this box. <laughs> <laughs> Just get all veiny with yourself, <laughs> yelling at yourself in the mirror. It's like you gotta do it. Like you say, you gonna write a. You say you gonna write science fiction. <laughs> so that's you, why I stand with that. <laughs> Uh, this uh, branch question from that you said you're uh you you you're mainly or not I won't say mainly but you you do like writing fantasy who what what's some of the fantasy you like to read? Oh, um, I'm a huge fan of like Brandon Sanderson. I'm a huge Brandon Sanderson fan. Like, um, his work is like really good. Like, it's a really good way to get into fantasy. Um, 
I like uh, Nicholas Amos, which is like the um, King King of the Wilds. If you haven't read that one, it is both funny and heartbreaking at the same time. Oh God, one of those. <laughs> Like, it's, it's hilarious when it's hilarious. It's heartbreaking when it's heartbreaking. Those are the best books. Yeah. And, like, that... I'm still intimidated with reading his second book because I, he put me in a slump with how good his first book was. <laughs> what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go look at this. What, what, what did you say it was? It's called Kings of the Wild. Kings of the Wild. And the Y is, is W Y L E D. W L D, yeah. And like, it is really good. <laughs> like, it broke my heart and made me laugh so many times that it put me in a freaking like, it put me in a slump with reading and writing because I was like, I can never do anything as good. I, I don't never, even know why I'm I trying. I can never measure up to this. You know, dead ass. <laughs> I kind of have that same feeling with my own my own personal author heroes. I love Jim Butcher and I love <laughs> Pierce Brown, and my I, my writing style drastically changed after I started reading Pierce Brown. I was like, I gotta go back and redo everything I have. I, I, had, I had a couple. Pa- I had I think I had almost a whole chapter of my novel, and that I'd written years prior, and then I read Pierce Brown. And I said, well, when I finally start reading my fucking novel or writing it, I got to change everything. And so <laughs> and so I completely changed my writing style. Finally, something happened that I needed something to distract me. And I sat down and finally started writing it. And, ah, God, he, he just inspired me so much. I absolutely love that man's <laughs> writing style. Yeah, and like some people just do that to you. And you're just like, oh, man, I just have to do everything over again. Like, <laughs> right. I don't even know why I like, right. thought that was like, good. <laughs> Man, my old style garbage. <laughs> let me just let me just t- steal this and a little bit of this. I'm gonna grab some off this tree, and now I have my new style. It's like fresh up, end it with old style, new style. This new best friend. Yep. I mean, in in reality. No one's truly original. We're all just a, a various mismatch of all of the other things we've encountered prior mm-hmm. to writing down what we just wrote down. So <laughs> it is true. <laughs> yep, that's one of the things that I absolutely that it's it. That's one of the things that's so fascinating about humans, both from a, a technology and art standpoint, is nothing is truly new because everything can be traced back to an inspirational source. It's yeah. amazing humans are that way. We would just constantly keep remixing things, and each remix is usually <laughs> better than the last. It's there amazing. are some cases that, like, that's not true, like Mulan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got me. You got me. <laughs> I actually didn't go and watch the live action. I said to myself, oh. I'm going to mm. wait for reviews. I'm going to wait till it comes out and see what people say. And people were like, yo, what the fuck? And so I was like... <laughs> Wash my hands. I like, I like, them. Called it. Like <laughs> <laughs> fucking eighty six. Hit the showers, boys. It's done. So yeah, oh, like oh. I do think, like I do think it's important that we have like adapted like more and more, and we've started like taking styles that are like not always original, but like you can take it and make it more like yours. Mm-hmm. So and I think everyone does that to a certain degree. Right. Right, like if you if you read my work and you've read Jim Butcher and Pierce Brown, I'm sure there's a lot of people who would say, "God damn, this dude really just blended Pierce <laughs> Brown and, and and Pierce Brown and Jim Butcher, and maybe threw in a little bit of his own insane sense of humor and puked out this novel." <laughs> oh yeah, like. There are going to be some like, inspirations. Yeah. And there's going to be people be like, hey, you're like this author. And I'm like, oops. <laughs> oh, no. I'm like this author I admire and who does absolutely great work. However, will I live with myself? <laughs> like, oh, no. <laughs> I've been compromised. Like, no, not really. <laughs> they know too much. <laughs> so... So, another thing I wanted to ask about uh-huh. uh, was um, the, the, the Swamp People. I, I, I didn't catch if they had a name. 
Did did they're they're, they're called the uh the bro the bros bro well, I can't say it right now but like it's like um it's basically like from Louisiana okay it's like oh it's French and I can't speak French so <laughs> got it <laughs> um okay but like go ahead okay so yeah them <laughs> um. The, at the at the end of the book, we kind of they have that conversation with, um, uh, was that Kindle they were having that conversation with at the end of the book? I can't remember. She's... I think they were talking about, like at the very end, like the epilogue, yeah. with his with her mom, with Kindle's mom. Okay. They had the conversation right. with. <laughs> no, no, I'm not thinking of the epilogue. I'm thinking of when they were in the hangar, and. They stormed into. She stormed into the hangar. That little servant he, creature. Yeah, the it was Kendall's mom. Oh, uh, that Ina. was Kendall's mom. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm so. Yeah. I, I was. I was fucked up for a second. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Yes. So, her and her tribe were talking uh-huh. about like their sworn duty and what they were mm-hmm. on this planet to do and how mm-hmm. they were now free of their obligation and everything. And mm-hmm. so I wanted to ask, what the hell were they sworn to do? Like, why were they bound to this planet? Um, this, we touched a little bit more about this on the, in the second book, but um, they are like kind of inheritors of these like powerful technologies, as you can see. Like, they just have hangers and hangers full of stuff, mm-hmm. and it was kind of their duty to like just keep this on a wrap. Just keep it on the wrap, keep it within the within the old planet, and just use what you need to use. Interesting. And do do we get a history, like an explanation of how they came to be strapped with that responsibility? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Good. You get, well, you get more and more about it. Um, and like, it's because like the brother. Uh, Ida's brother feels the way he does. He's like, yeah, we could we could just sell this and become rich, <laughs> like. So that's like his like. He's like, why are we stuck here while we can like do all these amazing things? Right. That and, and I got I gotta admit, like he he's kind he's a little bit of an asshole, and he but he kind of has a point. <laughs> but he kind of has a point. It's like, hey, yo, like we've been stuck here for generations, and no one's. No one's rewarding us for this shit. Like, there's no light at the end of this tunnel. We're literally just living our lives on this backwater, not doing all this amazing shit we could be doing. Like, I see his point, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, I was always kind of like, like, you know how, like, in fantasy books where, like, you're like, oh, man, you have this powerful responsibility. You have to keep it for, like, ever. And I'm like, when did it become to a point where you just get tired of doing that? Right. Like, Right. It, it, I, I assume these people are of uh, human descent. Yes. Okay. So with that in mind, especially when the fuck do you just get tired of it and say you've had enough? Because if it's like a mythical <laughs> creature, like an elf or like a shade or a lich, you can say, well, their minds just don't work the same way. They can do things yeah. literally forever and not get tired of it. But humans, we get tired <laughs> of shit like that. It's very yeah. hard to keep us on duty, especially over multi generations. <laughs> like it, it's gonna break at some point. It's the chain's gonna fucking break at some point. Like we just don't sit there and twiddle our thumbs. Like, yep, I'm just watching this hangar full of awesome shit, not touching any of it. <laughs> Bet. <laughs> like this is gonna go great. But I do think that like they are both of human and alien origin. So okay. like as the like generations got like more and more human i do think it was like the chains were breaking it was like we're gonna have to get rid of this crap like we gotta go I'm, like we're stuck on this backwater planet with some hillbillies we gotta leave <laughs> i don't care if we have to destroy the planet like <laughs> that's fucking funny <laughs> we're, we're stuck on this backwater with these goddamn hillbilly mutants <laughs> <laughs> that's i can just uh i can just imagine you you you're this you're this proud culture who's been safeguarding this planet for multiple generations and one day this fucking ship crash lands on your fucking 
uh, on your planet, and in 50 years, your planet is swarming with hillbillies. <laughs> yeah, exactly! <laughs> and you're like, oh! That is such a hilarious concept. <laughs> Like, oh no, we're infected. Exactly. Like, like, oh crap. We let them, we let them live for like fifty years, and now look where we at now. <laughs> They're breeding like rats. <laughs> uh, that's fucking funny. Uh, so, um, I my next thing is actually about said hillbillies because we we got some time with quite a few of them. But, mm -hmm. um, I didn't, we didn't get to see some of them in action and some of the ones we did see in action, we still don't know exactly what they do. So, mm -hmm. um, my question, I, I specifically wanted to know about Big Thunder and Rancher Queen. Like what, what are their Ooh, abilities? You get to see them in a huge fight in the next book. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Both of them get their ability shown in the next book because so many people ask for it. And I'm like, I already know Big Thunder's ability, and I already know Ranger Queen's ability. I just didn't have enough space in the book to tell it. Gotcha. Cause that, <laughs> that's one of the things I really, that's one of the things that I really enjoy in uh, just creative writing in general is giving people power sets. I yep. love giving people power sets and the counterbalances of giving them a, a weakness to go along with it and finding what they can and can't do with their power set. That's one of my favorite things in creative <laughs> writing and so uh, we saw big thunder fighting but it wasn't clear what he could do that, yeah. was, that was his ability and i was like so it, does he just punch really good like, I was like <laughs> and i was like show me the money damn it it never came <laughs> and then we never yeah like i said we never even saw rancher queen fight yeah i like i wanted to say you would see a lot more of her in the second and third book Oh, but like I want to be like, yeah, I want to like not give everyone the ability out on the first book. Cause I'm like, I want you to come back. <laughs> like, yeah. well, I gotta admit, you got me fucking curious. Like, that's one of my favorite things is analyzing abilities. I absolute, that's my jam. <laughs> Same. <laughs> like that's 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 one of my biggest things. Like, if you can you can really catch me in your book if you have some really cool abilities, like. I'll be like, okay, this character's kind of flat, but this ability, though. Like, <laughs> right, right. Like, oh, man, this guy sucks, but god damn, he kills people so good. <laughs> or not, or maybe not even kill people, so, but like, man, he is just useful for everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm much the same way. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 just such good fun. You can take, like, and, and what's really... <laughs> What's, what's a fun little aspect of that is you can go one of two ways in terms of like their personality. You can either match their personality to their ability or completely juxtapose them. Yeah. And yeah. both are equally interesting. <laughs> and it makes it so much fun. Like, you can match, like, Big Thunder is a match of his, but like, when you see it, you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> and like, I love those abilities. Like even, but Drifter kind of just supposes his because right. he's like, <laughs> right? Because like, he's like this big lizard, like right. He's like this small, unassuming guy, and he's very much <laughs> like he he wants to be laid back and peaceful, and he very much kind of lives his life by the speak softly, carry a big stick, <laughs> and then you get him pissed off, and you find out just how big the stick is. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, my my next thing was that this is obviously super far future. I mean, uh -huh. obviously, but I, I'm curious if you've picked, like, what Earth year it is in, if you've set a specific date. I haven't set a specific date, but I know it's, like, either the 3000s or 4000s. Okay. Like, it's really far in the future. <laughs> right. So... Yeah, because like, I mean, reading it, you 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 know it has to be, but based on some of the technology that exists. Yeah, so like I haven't set an exact Earth date, but I know it's like pretty far, because like I feel like they're like in the two thousands of their realm of their um time. 
Okay. Since like the first like they got to that like um orbit, so it's probably like four thousands in the Earth time. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's another thing. You do have intergalactic travel and colonization, and so you have when you a lot of people don't think about it, but when you have inter even inter solar, you mm-hmm. have to start coming up with unique calendars. I mean, yeah. really, every planet would have a unique calendar, but, like, you could kind of use the Earth calendar on Mars, and it wouldn't be god-awful, but, like, <laughs> once you leave the solar system, you have to get a new calendar. Yeah, so, like, it's just... You absolutely have to, and so that's another. That's one of those little nitpicky things that a lot of people don't think about, so, yeah. I yeah, like, like year I've that? thought about it, but, like, because it's, like, kind of soft science fiction... I don't have to, like, get into it too much. Right. Because, like, the, the, the audience is not going to be, like, with a magnifying glass being like, yeah. Like, right. You'll have the Trekkies <laughs> fucking analyzing your prose word by word. Like, now, <laughs> now, how do I draw out his exact calendar to make <laughs> yeah. it perfect? Because he's not clear in this passage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I try to avoid that, like... That crowd would there's a book at least. <laughs> <laughs> ah, fucking allergies, man. Yeah, I don't understand. it's about that time of year. I don't understand how I can have allergies at at winter when everything's supposed to be dead. It pisses me off. <laughs> so, um, in, in an extension of the Earth Year thing, it's kind of clear but not crystal, so I wanted to ask too. Um, is Earth, like, barren at this point? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the Earth is basically, like, all used up. It's gone. <laughs> like, there might be a few, like, things that are alive there. Don't get me wrong. There's probably some AI that's, like, <laughs> like wrecking shop down there. But, like, as, like, generally, nothing living is there. Gotcha. <laughs> nothing actually, like... You know, not being robust living. and and supporting a a big ecosystem. I got it. Yeah, gotcha. So, th- and this one kind of moves away from the story, mm-hmm. and moves into writing technique because the uh, this is something that I like analyzing and and hearing other people's thoughts. So I wanted to know if this was deliberate or something that is just kind of naturally your style, or maybe something that you do accidentally, that you're trying to work on. I, I, want, I want to hear your thoughts. So, um, the book is written in multi-POV third. Uh-huh. And sometimes it's like, sometimes the, the voice of the narrative and the prose sounds like it's being written from first. So is that deliberate, or does it just kind of write itself out like that? Uh, let me hear it's your deliberate, thoughts. It's deliberate. Because I feel like... Um, when it comes to third person limited, you can create your style within the narration. So I tend to do that to make it feel more like you're in with the character without being in first person. So, um, that was one of my main things that I was like, that that's just in my writing style is that I tend to take the third person, the narration, even when, is in third person and make it feel personal to that character. Gotcha. So yeah, it's deliberate. <laughs> gotcha. See, I and I I wanted to ask, like I said, because it's one of those things that could be just the way I write it, and you it might have zero thought gone into it, <laughs> or it could be a very deliberate choice. And so I wanted mm-hmm. to ask about that because some people. Some people just write how they write, and they never think about it. And it some some people do it, and their writing is good. And some people do it, and their writing is bad. But then some people, like you, they have say, "No, I really want it to come out like this." And so I'm going to employ this technique and this technique and this technique. Yeah, exactly. I will like when it comes to like writing style choices. I tend to be very like where I don't outline everything in my book. I tend to be very specific on, like, how I want specific things in the narration or whatever to feel. Like, front writing style choices, I'm very, like, particular. And that is something that, like, I feel like marks, me, marks my writing style. 
It's like, it's like, yeah, you can tell it's written by me because every character's narration feels different. Right. I agree with that. And, and you know, like that, this goes back to what I was saying with the generational drift thing and the having this huge family. All of them feel similar slash related i'm not sure what the ideal word is but they feel <laughs> there's there's a common thread that's the that's the way there's yeah. a common thread that runs through all of them but they all feel distinct and mm -hmm. it comes through and yeah you're i think you're right i i think i see what you mean with your style being chosen to lend itself to that yeah, <laughs> and that's why I tend to like kind of bigger cast of characters too, because I get to show that like it changes. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, that yeah, and, and keeping it fresh and and switching it up is you know variety is the spice of life, as they say, right? So yep, <laughs> yeah, I I can understand that approach one hundred percent. I dig it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, uh. This and this one, uh, <laughs> I, I'm I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this one. So uh, it seems like in the, in the writing, e, e, between e, and it it comes through multiple places between drifters commentary and appetites commentary on their family, and and the events that unfold and just even how they're portrayed on their day to day live lives. Um, it seems like you go a long way. To make sure the Caldwells aren't viewed as good guys necessarily, it really seems like you want them in this morally gray territory. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I want to show that like they want their freedom at like like all costs, even if it's like they don't want to be connected to the greater scheme of things, and that's sometimes a very, that's a very kind of like selfish ideal. If you sit down and think about it, because he's like, they're like, yeah, we don't want to be part of this like new, like society that's like kind of coming up. We just want to do our own thing, and like that's mainly because of how they was hurt in the past, right? And like, yeah, they are basically very morally great characters, and they'll do what it takes to survive. And I'm like, and I've always kind of enjoyed those type of characters. Like, if you ever play like Red Dead Redemption. They are all kind of like that kind of style of characters where like the times is different than who like the, who they are as a group. <laughs> right, fiercely individualistic, and uh, and very much not interested in participating in society. Yeah. <laughs> right. I got gotcha. you. And a lot of those characters are they're not only fun to write and read, but they're important to understand. They, mm -hmm. they, in, in understanding motivations like that allows us to understand the real world a little bit better and understanding why some people check out of society, why some people are so disagreeable and yeah. So yeah. I, and it, I can absolutely understand the Caldwell's position there that, Hey man, we're fucking lab rats to these people. Why should we participate <laughs> in their fucking society? Fuck that. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, I completely like, it's a completely understandable standpoint. And it's like, but it's still like, wow. <laughs> right. And, and like I said, but they're still morally gray because they have no qualms about stealing. Kindle killed her first guy before she was like 15. So, yeah. <laughs> so like, these people are clearly like not squeaky clean types at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's like, yeah, they were like they would they've been killing people since they're like it's almost like a rite of passage at this point. <laughs> and so like, I remember when I hit my first little bitch with the blicky. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so like, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to let you like voice a character at some point. <laughs> I'm down, 100. <laughs> percent I actually have a uh, I have a video on my channel where I uh, I do a short story that I wrote called The Clockwork Man, and it's uh -oh. uh, it's a western it's western steampunk, and Ooh. <laughs> and I do several different uh, I do a, a Englishman's voice because there's an Englishman in the story, and then there's two other uh western voices that i do 
uh, one is a sheriff and one is the main guy we follow. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I enjoy. I love to watch that because that sounds great. <laughs> yeah, story time, clockwork man, right here on my channel. Check it out. It's <laughs> it's very indicative of uh. Oh, I won't say very indicative. It's kind of different from my novel in uh, in tone and everything like that. But then again, it's a short story, so it kind of has to be. Yeah. You, know, you can't write a short story like you write a novel at all. Yeah, it doesn't work. I'm trying. It doesn't. It do different art forms 100%. <sighs> so, uh, man. So, are, are the next two books already out? Oh, uh, no, not yet. Like, I, um, the second one, it should be around about spring. Okay. For, um, for both of my series, my both my fantasy and my science fiction. should be around about spring. That weird March, April, May. Because, <laughs> like, a lot of people are asking for it, and I already have it, like, my editor is just kind of behind. <laughs> so. Right. I won't say mine's behind, because I didn't give her a hard deadline, but mine is off with the editor, too, so I, I understand <laughs> that, man. It's a whole fucking process. It, uh, it really is. It really is. Well, my editor does a great job, so, like, I'm yeah. like, I'll wait. <laughs> I'm enjoying working with mine so far, too. She seems to she seems to be very sympathetic to my looks, and no, it needs to be this way, and here's why. And she's like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> See, okay. Like, like, all right, let's unfuck the grammar and punctuation here as much as possible, and we'll we can leave the rest. <laughs> oh man, that hit me in my like. Oh, that hit me spiritually. Oh god, man. The the main thing is punctuation. Like my my command of grammar and and that kind of thing is is pretty good, but man, sometimes sometimes my punctuation just. <laughs> Exactly. Like that's like oh man, that explains it. Like that whole like just like madly cackling. Like <laughs> Yeah, man. It's like it's a comma or a semicolon. Why not both? Like it's the proper as fuck. I don't <laughs> It's like who let me who let me write? Who did this? Who gave me a goddamn keyboard? <laughs> you should be ashamed. <laughs> this isn't my fault. You gave it to me. You gave it to me and now I must make the world make all editors suffer with my like inability to use semicolons correctly. <laughs> I'm a monkey with a keyboard. What did you expect? <laughs> So, all right, man. End of end of video plug. Uh, where can people find you? Where can people find your book? Uh, it'll all be linked down in the description. So, where can they go? All right, you can find me on Twitter at Sir Buffalo Knight. You can find me on Facebook at uh, Author DJ Munden, and um, at Instagram Author DJ Munden. I also have a website which is also DJ Munden. Um. And you can find my books on Amazon. I just released the the audio book of Dust Mountain Blues. Nice. So if you want to listen to audio and have like a, a actual kind of like Western voice man, like voice all the characters. Nice. You should check that out. Oh, uh, Alex Zahn is a like amazing narrator. And like just hearing his voice, just, he's got the perfect drift of voice. I tell you, like... <laughs> So please check that out, and I've enjoyed uh, talking with you. Yeah, man, I've enjoyed talking with you too, and it's it's always nice to it, it's nice talking about talking not talking about well talking about too, but talking to other writers who write in the same genre because like man, you get it, you understand. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to be like yeah, someone that gets it because I would talk to some of my people and they'd be like I don't know what you're talking about, and I'm like. Crap. <laughs> right it's like man i i'll be talking to my dad and he doesn't read nearly as much science fiction as i do and sometimes i'll just be talking to him and and like it seems like we're having some it, it's so hard to nail the disconnect down because he reads some sci-fi so it's not like he's completely foreign to it but it's like there's just this little little glitch <laughs> in communication and we'll have an hour-long conversation trying to hammer out a minor glitch in how we're analyzing something and it's, <laughs> it's great but it's frustrating as hell because it's like we are on the same page but not 
<laughs> right. Well, yeah. We're well, we're on the same page, but I'm at the top and you're at the bottom, and we can't figure out how to meet in the middle. <laughs> that's the issue with me and my old man. That... Yeah, that's exactly how they explained it. All but right, yeah. Dude. It was a fucking pleasure talking to you. The book is Dusk Mountain Blues. Check it out. It's definitely worth your time. This has been uh, DJ Munden, and uh, I appreciate having you on, man. Uh, thanks for your time. It was, it, was, it was enjoyable, to say the least. I'm glad. All right, bro. Be well. All right. <laughs>